Peace and good day. Peace and good day. I'm so excited to be in your home again. Thank you, Lord. This is your host, Lady Gilmore, Queen on the Scene Radio. And today, as always, I am excited. E-X-C-I-T-E-D. Excited to have a young lady that want to take time and spend time with me these past 30 minutes and share her accomplishments of following your dreams. I call her my new daughter. Everyone that know Lady Gilmore know how much I love my young people. I love my young people. They're so full of life and they keep me full of life. But that's enough for me. Right now, I'd like to introduce you to my new daughter, Maria Payton. Welcome. Thank you so much. How are you? I'm well. How are you? I'm fine. Excited? Good. Excited to be sitting next to you. And they are in for a mwah <laughs> surprise, aren't they? They are daughter. in for a surprise. They're in for a surprise yeah. to sit here and we're just going to pretend like we were in our living rooms and imagine that God going to bless us <laughs> with one day. That's right. And sitting there speaking to one another. Daughter, would you please tell us about Maria? Well, my name is Marie Antoinette Payton. I am currently a contestant for Miss Black America for the Cleveland pageant that will be taking place June 26th at the Civilian Hall. I had to get that in. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> um, it's been a long time coming. I auditioned back in March 2010, and we're finally getting a wrap on things, and it's you know becoming a production at this point. I'm a graduate of Kent State University. My major was interpersonal communications, and I also studied Spanish while I was there. So I'm very proud of that. <laughs> and I'm very proud of you. Thank you. Miss Black, um, what did you say? Miss Black America for the Cleveland pageant. June 26, 2011. Yes, ma'am. Look what happened when you follow your dream. That's right. So what I would like to know is, is that pretty little girl coming up with pigtails, <laughs> jumping rope, I want to be a pageant. I want to be Miss Black America. Well, How you know this what? dream come? You know what? It never was a dream for me. I never thought of being in a pageant system. Okay. Um, I saw one day on Fox 8, they were talking about this pageant coming to Cleveland, and my mom kept, you know, nudging me to do it. And I'm like, I'm not going to do that. But I did it anyway. And then I was like, Mom, they called me back. So they called me back, and we had the auditions at the Caramu Theater in Cleveland. And then the lady told me I made it to round two. So she said, this is what you do. Show up on this day. And, you know, it's been going since there. So when you went for the audition, what did you do? We had to walk, well, you walked in, you introduced yourself. Um, at that time, they looked at your overall physique, your appearance, how it's not necessarily, they're not looking for the thin girls, but okay. they're looking for how well you put yourself together, how okay. you put it all together and how you look. Um, the inner beauty, but expressed on the outside. Mm. Also, I had to perform a talent, which my talent is the spoken word. So I did one of my original poems for them, and they loved it. So, for your new mama, Lady Gill, <laughs> we're going to place our set, ourselves in the setting of that pageant that day, going in for that audition. Tell us how you introduce yourself. I introduce myself as Marie A. Payton, a graduate of Kent State University and an inspiring author. I hope to one day be an, an author of a book someday. So that's where I'm headed in my life. Well, good. Well, then when you spoke about the author of the book and the spoken word, mm -hmm. did they have you recite anything? They did. I recited one of my original poems. Um, I have several original poems, actually, that are copywritten. They're just in the process of being published and put into that book form. So, Will you be able to share one with us today? I can. Please do. I can. Camera is rolling. Actually, the poem that I will be performing for the Miss Black America pageant, I wrote, and it is called The Black Woman, and you've already seen yes, this one. it's awesome. I didn't need collagen injections to make my lips the right size, and I'm not getting lipo to reduce the circumference of my thigh. I haven't spent hours in a tanning salon to darken the color of my skin, and who cares if mainstream America tells me I'm not thin. I don't put relaxers in my hair, nor do I wear extensions. I'm a beautiful black woman, one of God's most precious inventions. When the black woman was created, who knew others would try to emulate by altering their physical appearance, but still not enough to duplicate. 
You cannot reinvent the black woman. She's too unique to understand. That's why it's most difficult to replicate her using tools made by man. From the locks in her hair to the soles in her feet, the black woman is just one that simply cannot be beat. She's got hope in her face and a story in her eyes. Exemplifies nurture from her heart, yet strength and agility in her thighs. She can seduce you with her hips with every move that she makes. And a strong black man knows one move is all it takes. Unknowingly, the black woman has the power to intimidate just with her very essence and can command an entire room full of people simply with her presence. Empowered by her ambitious spirit, the black woman can achieve anything she wants, and she's conscious that she is all that, so there's no need to flaunt. See, the black woman is a commodity, not solely because of her grace and style, but she is the only type of woman that can carry the coveted title Lady of the Nile. Brick house, stacked, fine, bad, five star. I prefer Nubian queen. Truly, our existence is nameless, unheard of, unseen. Her realm is universal and extends beyond geographic boundaries and political creeds. The roots of this very nation lie deep in the veins from which she bleeds. No man, no obstacle, no storm can knock her off her game. Nothing can hold her back. Black woman is her name. So trust me when I say I love being me, a black woman, something most other women wish they could be. Wonderful. Each time I hear it, it touches my heart more and more and more. And I'm, I could really cry right now, but I want to hold my tears back because we have so much to share. Mm -hmm. Being the age of 26 mm -hmm. and what type of childhood did you have because that plays an important part mm -hmm. too we all have obstacles in mm -hmm. our past mm -hmm. so if the lord allow you mm -hmm. to share that with our audience because this could you know we want to encourage some young girl or young man that's even right at that you know lady gilmore in 26 years i've been through a lot i've seen a lot um i've only been in cleveland since i was eight around the age of eight um prior to that i lived in detroit i was born in los angeles and lived there until i was about five or six, um, come from a background where my father abused my mother, um, sexual abuse, I was raped when I was five. Um, and sometimes it makes me sad, but not because of where I've been, mm -hmm. but it's because of where God has brought me. And I can stand here today just happy and joyous and proud of where I've come from. Um, I'm a strong advocate for you do not have to become a product of your environment. Um, God has better plans for me. He has better plans for everyone. I don't think that just because bad things happen to you that you have to carry that on into your life. Mm -hmm. And actually, I look that's my stepping stone. When I look back, it's because I don't ever want to go back there. So each day that I'm pushing forward and moving forward, I'm remembering where I was and where I could have been. I could have been dead. I could have been a statistic out here. Mm -hmm. I could have been, you know, but I'm here, a graduate. Who, who would have thought? Um, I'm proud to say I have no children, um, you know, and my brother also is a college graduate. My sister, we're getting her there, we're okay. getting her there, but it's always been the three of us. Okay. Um, when we came to Cleveland, my aunt and uncle had adopted us. I was raised in Akron, and it appeared to have been a pretty good childhood. You know, I did the childhood things, Girl Scout, <laughs> volleyball, band. Yeah. I did pretty much everything, um, but always I was raised in the church, so I always had faith as my foundation. Um, regardless of whatever negative things I've been through, I've always had a faith-based relationship as far as with family and everything growing up. Um, towards my teen years, my aunt started to get verbally abusive to me and mentally abusive to me. And I can't even hide the fact that it did get me down. It wore on my self-esteem and everything. But you know what? Instead of fighting back with... N you know, negative things or retaliation. I fight back with strength, with hope, with joy, with peace of mind. God gives you peace of mind that surpasses all, surpasses mm -hmm. all. Um, and that just, that's just what keeps me going. Um, I want to become a cycle breaker. Senator Nita Turner came to my church and she was talking about we need to produce women and men the, in this day and age that are cycle breakers, breaking the cycle of teen parenting and mm -hmm parents that haven't graduated from high school or college or, you know, breaking the cycles of rape and drugs and all of it. There's more to life than that. 
Um, and that's, you know, God has more intended for us than that. So to sit here today is more than a blessing. You have no idea. Oh, bless the Lord. And see, daughter, this is what I'm about through the grace of God. Mm -hmm. Whoever the Lord touches my heart and have me minister to, mm -hmm. because all it is a ministry, mm -hmm. everything that we do, and thank God for the foundation mm -hmm. of the church. Yes, ma'am. Because you would have been probably still in the pit That's down right. there. Oh, woe is me. I... And there's so many that this have happened to. And with you sitting here today, letting them know, you can pick yourself up. I can't look back. My daddy used to tell us, if looking back prevents you from moving forward, mm -hmm. don't look back. That's right. And I, I, I appreciate your kindness mm -hmm. and your love for me because I want our, our audience to know, yes, I may have done, but look at this young girl. Yes, young lady, I'm sorry. Yes, ma'am. This young lady. Miss Black America, who would believe <laughs> while you was going through the abusiveness that right. you went through, right. that you would be sitting up telling us today, I'm running up for Miss Black America. And when you hear that in your heart, how do you feel? It's so many emotions that come to mind. I feel I'm very proud of myself, of my family, of where I've been. Um... It feels like it's always an obstacle to overcome. Um, and this is still an obstacle. I, I still don't have the title. But um, just, to, just to be in this position, is, it's wonderful. It's a wonderful feeling. I have to truly say that it is. Now, what can we do to help you with the process? Because I'm not familiar with the entire process, if you're able to talk about it. Um, well, right now, there's... Um, well, we're selling patron ads. If, if you want to purchase a patron ad, they're $35. And they're just well-wishers to say good luck or hope you, you know, wish you the best. At this time, I don't have tickets in my hand. However, tickets will be on sale. And then you can come support me that way. Okay. Um, donations are always, okay. you know, accepted. Prayer. Of course, prayer. Oh, definitely. definitely. <laughs> always. Okay. Now, where would it take place at? The Slovenian Hall, um, which is on... Retcher Avenue, I think that's how you say it. Retcher Avenue in Euclid, Ohio. So that's where it's going to be. So, I mean, how many young ladies is it? And There are, well, today we had an added girl, so I think six out of Cleveland. However, the Columbus girls will be joining us. Okay. And there's five or six of them. So I'm thinking between 12 and 15 adults. Now, there's also going to be a Miss Black America teen and a Miss Black America little miss. Oh. Yeah, and the teens are... 13 to 17, and the Little Miss are 9 to 12. So, in accomplished where you are now, mm -hmm. what inspired you to write that poetry the way that you, ooh, you can just feel that all down in your soul. And I know our ancestors. Yes, yes. I know the spirit of them. You know, I've seen it come up in you as you was reciting your poetry. You know, originally, I only wrote that for this pageant, actually. But, you know, it started to mean more to me, as especially in my generation, coming up, the only images of black women you see are the, the women in the magazines, the women on the videos, the women with no clothes on. The women, and it's like, black women, where's our pride? Where, where, look where we've come from. When I look back on pictures of like Miss Dorothy Dandridge, That's Nina right. Horn, Angie Day, beautiful women, beautiful black women, Maya Angelou, you know, Angela Bassett, Vanessa Williams, you know, where's our pride? And I feel a sense of pride whenever I recite that poem. Just being a black woman, um, able to go through, black women are strong. Oh, we're strong. They are strong, but we don't, we don't exemplify our strength through the media. And that's what I want to get out to young girls. Um, hopefully, if I win Miss Black America, even if I don't, um, I love to mentor younger girls um, and to, to bring that self-pride to them. They have to feel that as well, you know, in order for us to be productive and, and keep being productive in society as generation passes along. So, Well, that's what we are here for. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> God didn't place us here for nothing. We have work to do. And, you know, low esteem, self-pride, right. all of that pain that some of us keep bottled in. But just to turn on to uh, kazradio.org and say, whoa, listen to her. 
if she can do it, I can do it. And it's about encouraging. It is. That's the main thing. I mean, Miss Black America, you know, we, like you said, we are beautiful women. Mm -hmm. And when you look back, even further back than that, those beautiful, beautiful, yes. beautiful black women. My, my mother, my mother was, um, I only know my mother to be in the church, say. Mm -hmm. That's, you know, that's all I re remember. Well, that's a good thing. Yeah, you know, and it's, it, it is a good thing. But my mother was so pretty. I remember as a little girl, you you wouldn't know anything about this. <laughs> uh, where downtown is now, where the queue is. and yeah. uh, That was a market. It was the Central Market. And we would take the trolley okay. and go downtown shopping and get your fruit, et cetera, et cetera. And this, this man said uh, to my mother, you're the most prettiest lady I've seen today. And my mother said, thank you. I also have four children, and I would like for you to respect my children. I was like, wow! <laughs> but this is what it did for me. Being almost married 40 years, July 10th, wow. 2011. <laughs> when Lord. a praise the Lord, That's when right. a brother compliments me, Mm -hmm. I says, well, thank the Lord. My husband told me that this morning. And I'm going to let the deacon know right. that not only does he have exquisite right. taste of almost 40 years. Right. Now, this is what i like for you to do for me, my brother. Tell that to your wife. She would love to hear. That's right. And we, we have to be able to have the strength and the courage to say that. Because like you said, our beautiful black woman, we don't want to display negative images. Right. Right. And as pretty, you know, as you are sitting up here with great posture, you know, you have Thank me you. checking my posture today. <laughs> Thank I got you. my shoulders <laughs> shoulders back, sitting up straight, feet together, um, that we're going to run into this. Right. And we have to say, no, I appreciate you if you respect me as a young lady. You know, sitting here listening to you, that just, it warms my soul to say you've been married almost 40 years. I think that we are... This society is so getting away from marriage. Everybody's jacking up, having kids out of it. And I pray, you know, I pray that that's not me. I mean, of course, you can make the best of your circumstances and everything. But I think that that's another thing that I want to encourage younger women to do. Become wives. Become someone's wife Thank and you. someone's mother. Not a baby's mom. Not somebody, you know, become a wife. And that's exactly where I want to be. I want to be here yeah. saying, I've been married to so-and-so for 40 years. Yeah. That is wonderful. And I always tease my husband. I said, we had black hair together. Mm -hmm. Now we have gray hair together. <laughs> we had all our teeth together. That's now right. we have snowball teeth That's together. right. Uh, you can't pick me up like you used to pick me up and swing me around. That's right. But I do know how much you love me, and I don't want your back broke. So right. don't try to pick me up. So That's these right. are the things that, you know, we look at. Um, in a relationship, mm -hmm. such as the relationships that you had coming down through the years, the stages of life, that's yeah, what it is. Right. And the stage that you are now is you're telling these young ladies out here, and like I said, young men, you can do it. You can do it. If you, your mom told you, go and try for Miss Black America. And what's the first thing you told me? Say it again, we'll come out your mouth. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. But mommy said. Right. She did. She told me to go ahead and go and do it. And I told her no. And she actually didn't know that I really did it. She didn't know until they called me for auditions. And she was like, where are we going? I'm like, just come with me. Just take a ride. <laughs> <See>? <laughs> just take a ride. Young folks going to learn to listen to us one day. Okay? That's what my mom always says. Wow. <laughs> and what happened when you told her to take the ride? She was... You know, she was wondering, like, what was going on. So we get there, and she's like, oh, my God. She was just so full of joy. She, See, my mom doesn't think I listen to her. I do. I do. I can't let her know sometimes, but I, I do listen to her. Oh, I do. I mean, how did you feel to see your, your mother so excited and happy that you were there? Well, it was an emotional experience for me just because she didn't raise me. Okay. So that was one. And she missed a lot, you know. My first tooth falling. You know, she, she just missed a lot. Prom and graduation and different mm -hmm. things like that. So when I took her with me, and she actually, when I recited my poem, she cried. And it was, I had to try to keep it together so uh -huh. they wouldn't see me. But she cried, and it just was like, wow. Like, 
you know, it doesn't matter how many years we were apart. I know that my mother still loves, I still have that mother's love, you know. So that was, it was a great experience. A great nap. Let's talk some more about that mm -hmm. because I run into some of my young people. Oh, Lady Gilmore, I hate my mother. Ooh, ooh, oops, oops. Mm -mm. Time out. Mm -mm. Don't say that mm -hmm. because stages, mm -hmm. phases of mm -hmm. life, process, mm -hmm. procedures, we can go on and on. Mm -hmm. Maybe mommy wasn't ready to be mommy at that particular time. Don't right. shut her out. Right. Because when God said so, look what you just said, how emotional it was to look and see your mommy crying. Right. So share that with, with our audience, you know, our listeners, mm -hmm. because it's so much pain, daughter. It is. Going on out here, and they, they think we're fairy tales. It is. I mean, and just because I did have an aunt, you know, who stood in as the mother figure, because not all mothers are your birth mother, mm -hmm. which I understand that. Um, but at the same time, it's... It's nothing like having your mom. True. You know, um, and I think all children have a have a longing for mommy. Yes. Um, and just as you said, she may not have been ready. And I think a lot of my generation is not ready. We're having kids out here, um, and then we we wonder why the the babies that ain't doing right. Well, they're our age, of course. They want to kick it and have fun or do whatever. And I think that's just it. My mother wasn't ready. But she always reminds me, you know, each year I get older, you're getting this age, you're getting this age. By your age, I was married and had three kids, and I'm like, I'm not ready. I don't, you know, I don't want, I'm trying to break the cycle. So until then, mm -hmm. just going to chill out. And, and I'm, I'm so glad to hear that because the cycle, and I love, love Lena Turner. Mm -hmm. Wonderful, powerful she sister. She is. And I love her, but the cycle has to be broken. It does. And when they listen to me, like I say, talk, oh, Mama Lady Gilmore, you told me that before. I know that. But to hear it from you, right? because I'll go and get some of my younger people, mm -hmm. come and talk to my girls. Mm -hmm. Talk to them and let them know, yes, I'm struggling. I would like to have a boyfriend in my life mm -hmm. to date and to one day love and marry me, but not to live with me. Right. Not to have us children right. before I become his wife. Right. And you said that earlier. Right. That's, that's really important to me, just because I do come from that, you know, my mom, my grandma, you know, come from unwed mothers, teen mothers, and, you know, to graduate college without having kids, without, you know, it's a struggle. Motherhood is a struggle. I see it. I have friends that have kids, and I can't imagine, I probably wouldn't be sitting here today if I had kids, mm -hmm. and if I didn't go to college and didn't finish school, and, you know, I, my life would be a completely different story. When you crossed that milestone mm -hmm. of college, mm -hmm. how did you feel? Oh, my gosh. First of all, four years, it seemed like eternity when I was going through it. But now I look back, and it's already been four years since I've graduated. I'm like, where did the time go? And now I'm contemplating going to grad school. Oh, that'd be great. <laughs> Never did I ever think I was going to go to grad school. I actually didn't want to go to college. I wanted to be a flight attendant. And my aunt and uncle said, no, you have to go to college. Then afterwards, if you still want to do that, you know, then go ahead. Which I did. I didn't like it, so I'm glad I did go to college. Um, but it was a wonderful experience, and a lot of people don't realize all the things that you learn. Because some people say, well, you can get a good job without going to college. College is more than a degree. It's um, the life lessons I've learned, I've time management, cool. just simple things that you don't even think. But getting to class on time, turning papers in on time. I used to be really shy, believe it or not. I, w I could not do this interview. I used to be so self-conscious. I didn't know how to talk to people. I never looked people in their eyes. Wow. When they were I learned that in college. Okay. Um, I learned that. I learned public speaking. I took public speaking courses. I, I learned about intercultural communication and gender communications and how to relate to older and younger people, You know, people of different nationalities, religions, different things like that, which made me the diverse person I am. So I can talk to anybody. I'll talk to them all. <laughs> I can talk to it, okay. carry on a conversation with anybody. So and see, that's confidence. Mm -hmm. We have to have the you know confidence in ourselves. I think about a lot when you know reading about our history, mm -hmm. how you know the slaves they couldn't read, they couldn't write, but they had that desire in their heart. What is that word? What does that mean? Right. What is this? Right. And they shared with their children, go to school. That's right. And that's one thing 
that people cannot take away from you is your education. Um, you may have a good job. You may be, may be making six figures, a million dollars, but say that you don't have that job security, especially the way the economy is now. You know, what if you get hurt on the job or your wife or your husband or baby's mom, baby's dad, your kids get sick and you can't work anymore. But one thing, it doesn't matter if somebody came in and said no one else can work, they can't take away what's in your mind. And that's why they say a mind is a terrible thing to waste. You can never take away my education, ever. Ever. That piece of paper will stand forever and it means much. It means more than people think it does. Yes, it does. And that piece of paper helped lead you to be Miss Black America. <laughs> That's right. Isn't this something? It is. Could you imagine our great-great-grandfathers picking cotton, working <laughs> in the fields, uh, wringing the chickens' necks? You know, I'm from the north, so I don't know. I'm oh. just going by what I, I read. Uh, living in the one-room shack to hear us talk about Miss Black America? That's right. That's right. But you just visualize how they would be looking at us like, whoa, this has to be a dream. That's right. That's right. And you know what? This originated back in 1968. And I even still get people asking me, why is this relevant? Because now black women can compete in Miss America. However, I think that this is my personal opinion. I think that Miss Black America is relevant. Because we do need a sense of pride and a sense of, we need something. You know, just our camaraderie, our sisterhood. Where is it? We, we've lost it. So this helped that as well. Yes, we can compete in Miss America and, you know, we can compete on the other levels now that, you know, we weren't able to. But I think this is still relevant. We still need to work on, you got to take care of home first. Amen. So then that's where I'm coming from when I say that this is still relevant. Just look at you. <laughs> Could you imagine eight years old sitting here today? Not at all. <laughs> Not at all. Talking about, I'm going to be Miss Black America. And the reason why I'm constantly saying this, mm -hmm. people need to hear this. You keep hearing it over and over. Guess what? Bingo. Right. It's going to seep in. Oh, if she can do it, I can do it. That's right. And that's what we want them to see. You can do it. Just Put your mind to it. That's right. And, you know, you shared with us what, you know, we need to do to help you. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we're here to help you. We want to be part of that stepping stone. You know, when Jacob had the stones. That's right. Those stones were very important. That's they right. weren't just natural stone. Those were spiritual stones. And we want to be a part of the spiritual stone to help you be where God said you should be. That's so you right. can just tell the world you can do it. That's right. You can do it. You can do it. So what would you say to some of my daughters, my daughters that's at home or listening, what's that iPod and all that young folk stuff? I would definitely, this is the model that I live by. The quote of my life is Mark Twain. 20 years from now, you will more so regret the things that you didn't do rather than the ones that you did. So now is the time to take advantage of these types of opportunities, whether it's Miss Black America or, you know, finishing school, traveling. I like to travel. I'm a traveler. <laughs> I've traveled everywhere. I love to travel. Now is the time to do it before kids, before life sets in, before the husband. Before Now is the time to do it. And even if you have kids, take time for yourself. Take time to get away. If you can't be Miss Black America or you don't think that you know you have the time to pursue that take time for yourself everybody needs a long time everybody needs a long time so well let's talk about travel <laughs> tell my young people where they can go when they put their mind up to it well I just got back from Miami on Sunday um, I've been I've been everywhere I can say I've been to about 42 of the 50 states and this is not just because I was Miss Black America, but my aunt and uncle had us traveling a lot when we were younger. We've been to most zoos across the country. Um, you know, amusement parks, Cedar Point, Geauga Lake, Kings Island, all over Florida several times. Um, different beaches and islands. I love the beach. I'm a beach baby, so <laughs> I'm always on the beach. So I find different places that have beaches and try to take my friends. Definitely cruises. I would encourage anybody to go on a cruise. It's cruises. a life-changing experience. I love cruises. The first time I went, 
When I got off, I was ready to book the next one. <laughs> it just, it is. It really is. So even at 26, mm -hmm. you can still do these things? Yes, of course. Of Travel. Course. Work. Do you work? I do. Okay, let's talk about your employment. I am a client service rep at McCarthy Burgess Home. That's where my mom, I was actually recently laid off. But I did not spend a long period of time laid off. I was only laid off for about three and a half months. And finally, I got this position, which I am grateful because when I was sitting in the unemployment office, I heard stories and people were talking about two and three years. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, I hope that's not me. <laughs> and fortunately enough, it wasn't me. So I'm happy about that. I'm happy to be working. I can't sit at home. I'm always going, doing. I can't just be idle. I have to be doing something. So working. So do you have a phone number, email, a website I do. or something? Because we want to help you. Beating this black American. First, I we're going to <laughs> Okay. No, no, I said first, we're going to Oh, okay. Pray. <laughs> I oh. thought you were going to break. Yes, my phone number is 330 819 0285. And you can reach me via email. Email is probably better. I'm always on the internet. Um, which is M Payton, M like Mary, E like Paul, A Y, D like David, E N like Nancy, M Payton at yahoo.com. So those are the best two ways to reach me. And suppose I wanted you to text me, what would you say? If you want, if you wanted me to text, tell me to support you to be in this Black America. What you, would you say? If you wanted to text me, just encourage me, um, keep me in your prayers. That you know, I stay confident, and you know, life gets you down. There's ups and you have your good days and your bad days, but overall. You have to keep a positive mental and spiritual and emotional and physical image about yourself. So just keep encouraging me. Well, the Lord bless you yes. to take public communication. Interpersonal communications, yes. So on that note, everybody know Lady Gilmore. God has <laughs> placed me in places. Pastor speaks about the favor. Mm -hmm. I'm going to invite you to close our show out. Okay. Go ahead, Don. Well, this has been a wonderful experience sitting here with Miss Lady Gilmore. I've enjoyed myself. She's a wonderful woman. I am very honored to be on the show with her. Thank you so much. This has meant so much to me. And peace and greetings to everyone sitting in your home. God bless you all. Peace.